NAD boosters, different kinds of NAD boosting supplements like NMN, nicotinamide riboside, or even NAD IVs have become quite popular over the past few years because they help you to raise NAD levels, which is thought to have positive effect on anti-aging and longevity. Now, it is true that all these supplements do raise NAD levels, especially the NAD IV, but in this video, I'm going to talk about why in some cases these NAD boosters can be a waste of time. Do it. The NAD boosters, I think they're great. I actually take quite a lot of NMN regularly myself. I take some other NAD boosters as well. I haven't done the NAD IV, but uh, I do think that obviously there are many cases, many situations where taking these NAD boosters and getting like an NAD IV is actually very important and very powerful in terms of raising your NAD levels and then helping you to have more energy and have better insulin sensitivity and other things that it has been shown to improve. The problem is that over the long term, you also need to make sure that uh, you have the NAD recycling pathway working properly or the NAD salvage pathway. Now, this is a topic that I have covered <laughs> quite a lot. I'm pretty probably pretty much the only content creator on here that uh, talks about this, uh, the importance of the NAD salvage pathway, because your NAD production, obviously, yeah, you can raise your NAD in the short term with these boosters and supplements and IVs, but over the long term, you have to also recycle that NAD. So what happens is that whenever you raise your NAD levels from different means, whether that be with uh, diet, exercise, or these NAD boosters, that NAD gets created and uh, the majority of it will be directed back into the salvage pathway of producing NAD. The salvage pathway is where your body is recycling that NAD and converting it back into NAD through the enzyme called NAMPT. Now, this is a quite important step because this is the bottleneck in how much NAD you actually produce on a daily basis. If you take an NAD booster, if you eat food that helps you to raise NAD levels, then uh, all of that goes into the salvage pathway. And if the salvage pathway isn't working properly, then you're not going to recycle that NAD either. So it's almost like a short-term fix if you uh, don't have the NAMPT enzyme working properly. And yes, if you do have the NAMPT enzyme shut off, then you're not really recycling that much NAD because it's the bottleneck in terms of how much NAD you're producing. It sucks! NAMPT or nicotinamide phosphoriboside transferase is this enzyme in the salvage pathway that, that determines how much NAD is produced. NAMPT is uh, actually dependent of CERT1. CERT1 is a circadian clock gene that uh, yeah controls the NAPT activity. If your NAPT enzyme is offline because of not having the CERT2 activated either, you're not producing that NAD and you're kind of you know wasting that. You're creating this uh, bottleneck situation. So the number one critical thing to have the NAD salvage pathway working properly and to actually benefit from NAD supplements over the long term is to have the NAPT enzyme activated, which requires circadian rhythm alignment. So how do you activate this NAPT? And cert one is to align your body with the circadian rhythms. That means waking up in the morning, not sleeping in too late, and uh, not staying up past midnight or something like that. Humans are diurnal creatures. We are supposed to be, you know, be awake. We have to wake up in the morning and go to bed at least before midnight. There are obviously different chronotypes. Some people have more morningness. Some people have more eveningness. But the general trend is still that we should have like a diurnal rhythm, not a nocturnal rhythm. There's no natural human who has like a specific uh, nocturnal rhythm. They may be more nocturnal than average people, but they're not uh, like full nocturnal. We're not like mice or uh, owls. Getting exposure to bright daylight in the morning is also critical for kickstarting the circadian rhythms and helping you to produce melatonin at night. So the cortisol melatonin rhythm is what determines pretty much your individual circadian rhythm. So in the morning, you want to re raise your cortisol levels with bright light exposure, some movement, maybe cold exposure. Uh, even like caffeine in some cases can be a good a way to raise the cortisol levels, uh, but in the evening you want to have the melatonin surge, which requires you to produce melatonin in the absence of blue and green light, which usually comes from artificial sources. So in the morning, bright light exposure, in the evening, block blue light. The other things that activate the NAPT enzyme are things that raise AMPK, which is this energy stress sensor that gets elevated from things like exercise, intermittent fasting, calorie restriction, and even things like caffeine can do that. So in conclusion, what you want to do to actually benefit from NAD boosters over the long term is to activate NAPT. That involves circadian rhythm alignment, exercise, time-restricted eating, some aspects of calorie restriction, 
and even calorie cycling, carb cycling, all those things will also have an effect on AMPK and AMPT. One additional supplement that also feeds into the uh, recycling and salvage pathway of NAD is NAM, niacinamide. So this is the only kind of very cheap supplement that could also have a direct effect on this NAD salvage pathway. So uh, overall, I do think that uh, taking some NMN, nicotinamide riboside, or uh, NAD IVs, they're great. Yes, they work in raising NAD levels, but over the long term, you still want to make sure that uh, your uh, NAD cycling, recycling pathway and salvage pathway is working properly. If you want to learn more about optimizing your NAD levels and raising them, then check out my circadian NAD activation system guide. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.